Well, the loss of a loved one is just a devastating experience, and that's why we search great lengths to find the best health care and insurance for our children and our family members, and that includes our pets. Yes, our pets, because guess what? We love them too, right? But understanding the needs of correct care and planning for the cost of veterinary care can be confusing and downright misunderstood. And so as part of our My Pet series we have with us today, pet owner Meg Wittenmeyer of Rocky Mountain Great Dane Rescue and Lauren Hickton, Executive Director of the North American Pet Health Insurance Association. Hey guys. Hi, Danielle. Good Thank morning. You. Good morning, Danielle. So glad to have you here with us today, but I have to point out very quickly, we do have a third guest with us this morning <laughs> as well. I, I think this guest is sort of a star. This is Sasha. She's from the Broward County Humane Society, and she's with us today visiting. Oh, we're so glad to have Sasha here with us. We should add that Sasha is up for adoption as well, which is a very important point to mention. She's so adorable. And when you look at that face and, and you look at the faces of, of other pets, people absolutely, as we said at the top, love their pets. And so they do whatever they can to keep them safe and healthy, right? But isn't taking them to the vet enough? Well, I, I, I think that, you know, we want to see pets because they can't talk for themselves. Mm -hmm. We want them to get to two visits per year to their veterinarian. But we also want them to be protected. There are a great deal of uh, opportunities to for disease and so forth, and having pet insurance gives you the ability to uh, reduce the chances that you're not prepared. And frankly, we feel that a lot of pet owners are just not prepared for the cost of today's veterinary care. You know what, it's interesting because we talk about how much we love our pets and we would do anything for our pets. And you mentioned pet insurance, but here's the thing I have to tell you, given the economy and the recession, a lot of folks may think, guess what? I can't afford it, number one. And number two, the premiums far outweigh any potential benefits. All the more reason to have pet health insurance right now with the economy because the ability for us to have um, a balance on our credit card or some other form of funds to cover pet care is just not there. And we know that each and every month we have thousands and thousands of people with large claims. So the ability to be able to provide the care you want for your pet requires pet insurance. Well, somebody who knows about that all too well. <laughs> Meg, that yes, would be I you. Do. <laughs> I mean, you have a very personal and compelling story to share about this. Yes. About your lovely, your big dog. <laughs> My big dog, Heimdall. He's a great Dane, and uh, besides being deaf, he's just really special to mm -hmm. us. And uh, he got sick in November of 2008 with just an upper respiratory infection, uh, just a cough. Soon became obvious it was getting worse than that and my regular vet had exhausted his resources, sent us to a respiratory specialist, uh, just like people have, so do dogs, and uh, she was able to identify it as a, a pneumonia after uh, a bronchoscopy and other kinds of tests that cost a lot of money. And uh, we put him on an antibiotic, but he got resistant to that one, put him on another one, and pretty soon we were kind of running the gamut of stronger mm. and stronger antibiotics, paying at one time $300 a day just for the drugs. Holy cow, so at the end of the day, the cost of Heimdall's care became astronomical for us. Oh, it really was, and there was never any question that we were going to continue the care sure. and give him whatever he wanted. I mean, we considered uh, a second mortgage on the house because the bill was running up Wow, that high, but uh, thanks to the pet insurance that we did have and that I'd been paying premiums mm -hmm. on for years, um, within six months, they had paid over $10,000 to us, which was our annual maximum. Amazing, and so given the story, it's, it's safe to say that the benefits do far outweigh the costs. Well, in, in, in many cases, but I think it's important that, you know, we all sort of view our pets as family members, and we wouldn't look at our children and say that uh, their health insurance wasn't worthwhile or mm. wasn't a good investment. Mm -hmm. So it's really about being prepared. I know with, with my pet at home, we'll do anything we can to provide him with the needed care much like Meg. And you know, and that's exactly what your organization provides, right? And I think that's what a lot of people need to know and take away from this. Well, we represent uh, nine of the major uh, pet health insurance companies in North America. And our effort is to create the highest level of transparency so pet owners really know and understand what they're purchasing. And our objective is to reduce economic euthanasia. Basically you know. meaning if you don't have the money to care for your pet, in the long run that pet will end up dying. Yes, or maybe turned into the Humane Society. Uh, that's happening a lot. And so we want to create with you uh, responsible pet ownership 
and we want to do everything we can to support the wonderful bond that is possible Aww. between pets and humans. We're all healthier when we have pets in our lives. You know, our cost of human health insurance is reduced for those who have a pet in their home. Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference. It makes us healthier. And keeping our pets well and doing the right thing for our pets right. means providing care. Absolutely great information. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning on The Balancing Act, sharing your personal story, Megan. Of course, your great information, Lauren. Thank you. And if you want more information on North American Pet Health Insurance Association and how you can protect your own pet, visit their website at www.nafia.org.